How's it going everybody? Welcome to the next episode. This is the part of the series when we're actually going to take and bond the three layers of the transom together. Now originally it said in my video series that we were going to use PL Marine. I've since decided to kind of change things up a little bit and use the epoxy resin mixed in with some of the chopped strand fiberglass to give it a little bit of extra strength. All right, and you can also see here, I've also pre-positioned a boatload of C-clamps here. And I pretty much dug in and grabbed every one that I could find just to make sure that when we apply the epoxy resin here, we get a really good squeeze so we know it's it doesn't have any hollow spots in the center. And what I did, I put I put a little bit of torque on these C clamps and then I went around 100% all the way around to make sure there wasn't any gaps anywhere. And keep in mind this wood from the factory is very straight as it is. Let's take a look up close here. See if I can catch it. So you can see there's not really any gaps here. And one of the things you'll note here is not all the layers line up perfectly. Not a big deal. Because after we get these bonded together, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually go through and apply a um, 40 grit sander on the side of it and, and actually level these out completely and make them all flush. So that's kind of my plan here. So if you notice, it doesn't look completely flat across all the uh, three surfaces, completely normal. We still got a little bit more finishing work to do. You'll see in the corner I used some marine grade plywood. And the only reason I did that in the corners is because I don't have the bottom piece of that C-clamp, so I needed something to keep from creating a divot on it. So there wasn't any special practice for doing that. It was just because these two didn't have the proper cap at the bottom of it. Must have lost it. But yeah, this is going to be good. You could, if you wanted to, you could run um, like a 2x4 across the center if you like. Keep in mind, this is really super high quality, super flat plywood. So I'm not really worried about that too much. The truth will be when we actually cut the center out, if we see any voids in there, we probably knew that, you know, maybe we should have run something down the center, but I feel pretty confident in this, this wood here. All right, so what we're gonna do now, since I've got all the C-clamps pre-positioned, is I'm gonna go ahead and just loosen them up just enough so we can get them off and put everything in a good location. We'll talk about the chemicals we're going to use to get these three sheets bonded together. Okay, so here's what we got. Here's the setup. You want to definitely make sure you have acetone here. It's going to be to keep your brushes and everything nice and clean. You're going to need plenty of the mixing containers. Preferably when you get these, make sure you get the ones with the measurements on the side already. It just kind of helps speed up the process. And we talked about this in the last episode. We've got the US Composites Thin Epoxy Resin. This is a 635 model. It's basically a two-part. And the way you mix it is three to one. Is You're going to grab your mix and measure. And we're not reducing it at all, so we're going to use this first column. And we'll probably end up using roughly, I'm kind of debating on how much to use, but probably at least like a, a quart. So we're going to go over here to roughly where the quart is. And we're probably going to be mixing, I'm going to, I'm going to say probably the fours. So you mix the first part on this four and then the next we'll hit this four over here and then we discard this last column. And that gives us a three to one. So that's kind of a little bit of how-to when it comes to these mixing containers here. All right, and then also we've got the roller. 
This is a special nap roller for epoxy. You could probably use the ones that are designed for paint, but U.S. Composites told me that these are actually better for using fiberglass and Kevlar and whatnot. You want to get a, a ton of these brushes as well. I've got a, a whole entire box of them. Pretty much throwaways, but if you're the type where you like to reuse them, what you'll do is you'll fill this full of um, acetone. And after you're done using them, have uh, someone go in there and clean them up for you and just make sure they're sitting in there. All right, so let's look in this little bag here. This is actually some leftover 1708. You've probably heard me talk about this from a prior project. Let's see if I can get the light well here. It's got a mat on the back and it's woven fiberglass. We may use this to fix that hole at the bottom of the boat since I got a bunch of it left over. But really what I'm here to show you is at the bottom here, I've got a lot of loose fiberglass kind of like chop strand basically without being pressed into shape so more than likely what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix up the epoxy I'll mix up the epoxy and then mix also in here some chop strand this way it gives it a little bit of flexibility and it's not just pure resin in there and that's how they had it on the prior transom as well it had mixed in chop strand in there. So I'll do the same thing. A little bit of extra flexibility, not gonna hurt my feelings. And as you can see here, I've got an entire bag full of it. So I'm just gonna apply a little bit. I don't want it, the one thing that's kinda iffy about this is when you first put chop strand in, it can kinda get clumpy. And the problem with clumpiness here is it'll throw off the overall surface. So I'm just gonna put just enough just enough in there, nothing crazy. And that's gonna be my plan of action. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and take two of these pieces of the transom off and we're gonna dress up the bottom side first and then we'll apply the quarter inch sheet first. See if I can get it to focus. We'll apply, we'll dress this one up with the epoxy and then I'm gonna sit this one on it and then I will cover this one with epoxy and then sit the three quarter on top of that. So we're gonna have uh, basically two times when we're gonna apply this epoxy here. The one thing to keep in mind is when you're doing all this work is how much time do we have to get all this achieved? And this is where you wanna consult the manufacturer. Take a look here. The pot life of this medium, right? epoxy is going to be 20 25 minutes so if this is your first time doing this what that really translates for you is work fast you're going to have to work really fast and i wouldn't recommend since i've done this before i feel pretty confident i would, wouldn't make, uh, recommend what i'm going to do because you're you're going to want to try to make everything perfect and if it's your first time you may end up having these already start bonding um, the two surfaces this one and this one before it, you get a chance to put the clamps on it. So in your situation, what you want to do is if it's your first time doing this, just bond the two surfaces together and then clamp it. And then once, once you've got a good adhesive and this, uh, it adheres properly to the, the three quarter and the quarter inch, then at that point, coat this one and then clamp them all together. I'm going to work pretty fast when I do this. So we stay within that time frame and we don't end up ruining these because you could if this stuff dries uneven you're going to end up having to sand this back down all right good stuff so let's go ahead and kick off the uh, measuring phase of this and we'll go ahead and get a, applying okay so you notice i wrote a three on on this one and then a one on that this way you don't accidentally flip it and mess this up you got some time when you just have the resin in the container, so that's why I said, well, we could do a quick video here. But you'll see I got it precisely measured off at four, and then we're gonna add the hardener up into this four. We've got some popsicle sticks. We'll go ahead and measure it, or uh, mix it. And then I've got the nap, um, nap roller. We'll go ahead and start rolling it on there after we apply some of the fiberglass in there. 
Okay, so we mix the hardener in here. And I'm just slowly putting a little bit of fiberglass in there at a time. We're not trying to put too much in there. Like I said, it messes up the overall thickness. So we're just trying to put enough in there. Just keep in mind as you're doing this too, you like I said, you once you mix this, it's got a 20 to 25 minute pot life, so you gotta be pretty quick. So we're gonna mix the rest of this here. And you can start to see, once it starts getting a little bit full in there, that's when we need to start considering not putting any more in. So I'm just gonna get a little bit more in. You don't, whatever you do, you don't wanna throw a big clump of this in here. You'll have some major issues if you do. It'll be too thick. And also make sure your two-part epoxy is mixed before you throw it in here. Don't, don't just throw your resin and then turn it because then you won't be able to get the proper mixture. So we're getting pretty close. Pretty much guesstimated this one pretty good here. So we're going to call that good. I'll stir it just a little bit more. And you can kind of see in there that we got a pretty good mixture of fiberglass as well as the resin. So all we're trying to do is just give it a little bit extra strength. You don't have to go too overboard with this. So we'll, we'll go ahead and apply it now. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start pouring it. Just like that. And we'll go ahead and start spreading it out. And like I said, keep in mind with this process, you only have about 20 to 25 minutes to get this whole thing completed. Okay, so I'll go ahead and add a little bit more on this side as well. And you can kind of see, we, we haven't gone too crazy with the fiberglass. I'm not, I'm not too concerned with that. I guess I just want to give a little bit extra strength in there. All right, making really good progress so far. Just got a little bit more to go, and you can kind of see we did this whole thing within a matter of, I don't know, what is that, like two minutes, one minute, which is good. That's what we need. And don't worry about getting the edges at this point. We're just going to make sure we got complete coverage all the way through. You see that little spot that I missed? Good to go now. Want to make sure you get all the corners. Just do a quick once over. Make sure all the epoxy is laid flat. Almost looks like a, a little bit of a mirror finish right now. It's looking pretty good. All right, so we've made complete coverage of the epoxy all the way through. You can see the little speckles of fiberglass. Probably wouldn't hurt to put a little bit more in, but I'd rather err on the side of caution and put less in there. It's kind of up to you, but in my case, not too worried about it. We're covering this sucker with Kevlar. So if water ever does get in here, we've got much more problems to worry about than, than not putting enough little pieces of glass in there. So you can see here, we got a little bit more of the white speckles. We're doing, we're covering both sides of the, this is the three quarter side, by the way. So we're covering both sides of it. So we're not applying a dry edge. We're gonna actually have a wet on wet edge. And then whatever material comes out of the other side, we're not gonna worry about that because we wanna have, we wanna make sure we got good coverage. So this is where you can start to see a little bit more of the glass coming out. Okay, so you can see we got a wet on wet surface all the way around. And we'll press those together here in just a minute. I made a little mark right there so I made sure I didn't mess this up. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and coat this surface with the epoxy resin and slam on the last three quarter inch side and we'll start clamping it down. Alright, and you just got the quarter inch sheet covered. You can see the speckles of fiberglass in there. Looking pretty good so far. We'll go ahead and coat 
the three quarter inch side on the other end that's going to mate up to this one and we'll go ahead and start clamping it up. All right, so we got both sides prepped and we got this one prepped too. We're going to go ahead and put it together. You can see all my speckles of fiberglass in there. Let's go ahead and put this final piece and clamp it down. Okay, so you can see we've got all the C clamps all applied all along the edges. One thing you may notice is saying, hey, why is the top coated with the resin? And this is one of those little mistakes that people make when they're doing things and they're trying to do it in a hurry, is you accidentally coat the wrong side, which luckily for me, I made some marks on it right here. And that's how I knew I was actually coating the wrong side. So rather than just stopping with half the coat done like on the corner, I went ahead and just coated the rest of it just to seal the top. It happens. Not a big deal. I actually had leftover epoxy anyway. So if I hadn't coated the top, I would have just wasted it anyway. So, you know, why not just seal it? This thing will be dry in, in no time flat anyway. So there you go. One of the things I did is as, as we looked along the edge here, you can see we've got some of the material dripping off. It's not a big deal if, if you do have some of that where it's obviously oozing. You do want to kind of knock off the bottom side so it, it just makes grinding that much easier. But you can see there, plenty of good coverage. Another thing to note is you don't want to squeeze the C-clamps to the point where it squeezes all the epoxy out of the center. So that's one of the things that I did when we were applying this here is just squeeze it just enough to make sure it was nice and flat, but not enough to squeeze all the material out. So a little bit did come out, not a big deal. You can see on the ground some of it did come out, but I'm not worried about it. So we're going to sit here and watch it as it's kicking off. You can tell one of the things about epoxy is it does actually start to get a little bit warm as it's starting to, to cure. So I'm going to keep an eye out on it, make sure no foreign objects drops on top of this. Because that would be, that'd be pretty terrible. But it's looking pretty good. I like the epoxy. One of the things that benefits using epoxy over polyester resin is you don't need a mask when you're working around this because the epoxy is not as toxic. It doesn't have as much fumes and whatnot coming off. Polyester resin is terrible. You definitely have to have a mask anytime you crack that open. Very, very smelly product. But that's pretty much it. I'm going to sit here and watch this for a little bit longer and make sure nothing falls in it. What we'll do next after this dries is this will be in the next episode mind you is we will actually start grinding along the surface to make it nice and smooth and then we'll start coating it with the Kevlar to seal this thing off completely both sides and all the uh, the end pieces so that's what the plan is as always I hope you liked the video subscribe if you're not already a member Leave me some comments if you thought it was helpful. And there's going to be more coming up. Stay tuned. Have a good one, everybody.